G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now, Microsoft Syntex Content Assembly is an amazing way for you to be able to automatically generate and dynamically generate all of those repetitive business documents that you might be creating across your organization. So think of things like contracts or renewal letters or employee agreements or those type of repetitive type of documents. We want a nice, easy way to be able to create those uh, and also reduce the errors and things like that that do uh, come along with uh, copying uh, pre-existing documents and, and that type of thing as well. Now today we're going to be looking at a part of uh, the content assembly functionality that allows us to map uh, the, the fields inside of one of our modern document templates to SharePoint columns in the library where these documents are being created. So no, no longer do we have to build out models or extraction processes or things like that to pull out that information from these documents and insert them and create uh, columns for those in SharePoint libraries, we can actually do that as part of uh, Syntex Content Assembly. So let's have a look at how we go about setting this up. And we're gonna start by creating a modern template. So in this site here, I've got the option under the new, uh, under the new button to create a modern template. Now we can either upload a document or we can select from um, one of our uh, document library in our, um, in our uh, tenant, okay? So what we can see here is that I've got a document here and it is a contract renewal letter. So I'm gonna use that as our template. Now one thing to note here is that once we choose this as a template, it isn't actually linked to this originating document, all right? So if we change this document in the, uh, in the library in its current location, then that's not going to be reflected in the template that we're creating here. So I'm going to select this document and then it's going to load up into our editor. Uh, and this is where we can uh, create our fields of our modern template. So the vendor name, um, we're just going to select uh, the text here. So we'll add a new field. We'll give this a name of vendor name. We'll then highlight this uh, text that we want replaced. We'll confirm this on the right hand side. And now what we can do is select what type of information we're going to replace. It can be, or how we're going to replace that. It can be a freeform text uh, option. And you can see here the type of information. We've got single line, multiple lines, numbers, date and times, emails and hyperlinks. But we can also choose from uh, a Microsoft list or even a, a manage meta term set or term. So we're going to choose uh, from a list that I've already got on this RFQ site. So I'm gonna choose this vendors list and we're going to choose the title column that houses or stores our uh, vendor name. We'll then save that. We'll then save this there and now we've got a field, all right? Now, the next thing we're going to um, choose here is we will, enter or we'll have an expiration date, but I'm gonna change things up a little bit here. So what we're going to do is we'll call this um, expiration date and we'll choose a different type of uh, column here, all right? So we'll go, we'll choose, we won't choose that, we'll choose that, we'll go next. Now let's enter in a date, all right? So we're going to choose our date column uh, freeform so that when we create this, we'll be able to choose a date picker. And now we've got a manual input. So we've got the vendor name as the title and we've also got the expiration date, all right? Now, what if we wanted to then extract this information? So when we create this, this information that we've got and we're sourcing here lives in a Microsoft list. Uh, that is separate from the document library that we're creating this template in or we're publishing this template in. But what if we wanted to create, where every time that we create one of these documents, we wanted to extract the vendor name and then have that as a column in our document library. Well, let's publish this first. Let's press this publish button and let's see what we can do. So we can see here that this option here allows us to change our template name. So I'm just gonna leave it as that. But here, what we can do is show fields as columns. 
All right, so we can add the fields to the custom view of the document library that we're creating or we're publishing this in. So how about we select both of these? All right, so we're gonna extract the information and we're gonna insert it into a column inside of SharePoint. Now you can also see here that we can choose to set the default view or this view as uh, the default view of the library. All right, so I'm gonna leave that on and I'm going to publish that. So it's now publishing that template to our document library. Once this is published, we can then go under the new menu and then create a document from uh, from our, uh, our template. Now you can see here that I've got a little notification, a view to match your template. So here I've got a custom view that's been created for me from that template that we've just created, all right? If I click the drop down, you can see I've got the all documents default view and I've now also got this custom view here. You'll also see that we've got the vendor name and we've got the expiration date that have been created as columns. Now, when I go new, reminder contract renewal letter, I'm going to be creating a new document based on that modern template. And I now have on the right hand side, because I've added two fields to this template, it's going to load that f a form on the right hand panel here. And I've got the option to choose the vendor. Now that's coming from a Microsoft list. So I'm going to choose Microsoft and here is our manual entry of our expiration date. So I'm going to choose that there. And you can see that those two have been inserted into the document. I'll click create document. And here is where I can create the document name. So I'm going to say Microsoft uh, contract renewal letter. And you can see that it's, it's um, been created in that particular library there. Now you can also see that I can create it as a PDF or a document, all right? So I'm gonna leave it as a Word document and I'll hit create, all right? So it's creating that document based on our template. It's now created, but look what happens to the information that we've entered. It now gets extracted out of the document and inserted into our columns uh, inside of SharePoint. So let's do another one. Let's choose a, uh, some different values here. So again, we're creating a new contract renewal letter here. Right hand side, we'll have our form that we can uh, select our values from. So the first one is our list, the second one is our date. So I'll choose Apple on this one, and then I'll choose a different expiration date, uh, and we'll create this document. Now this time, let's go for Apple, and we'll change our document to PDF and we'll hit create. So now what's happening is it's creating a document based on that template as a PDF document. And again, what we'll see is that we've got the vendor name and the expiration date being extracted from our document and inserted as values into our SharePoint columns. Now we can use these columns as we normally would. So we can group by vendor name, all right? So now that gives us some uh, some capabilities and some uh, the, uh, the ability to use the SharePoint document library functionality as we normally would but with the added advantage in that we don't have to go and set that metadata every time we create our document now based on that template, it'll get pulled out of that document and added as metadata to our SharePoint columns. So once again, I hope that brings you some value today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.